99% of people who learn to Kegel fail and then quit because they were never taught how to feel a Kegel contraction and where to feel it. To show you how to avoid the most common trap and to understand all the things that enable you to learn how to Kegel faster, I'm gonna take you through everything you need to know, literally A to Z in today's video, so that you can be confident you are performing Kegels properly, so that you can strengthen up your pelvic floor and recover from erectile dysfunction and urine leakage quickly. Welcome back to the channel everyone, I'm Eric, Doctor of Physiotherapy, and today's video is for those of you that don't have a lot of free time, for those that are just learning about their pelvic floor muscles, and finally, it's for those of you that are getting frustrated trying to strengthen your pelvic floor on your own and not getting very far with your recovery. I have discovered a straightforward method that even the biggest beginner can follow and learn how to Kegel properly. I'm here to help watch the video all the way to the end to soak up all of the knowledge and practical tips. Let's get into it. Okay, first things first, what is a Kegel's exercise? A Kegel's exercise is also known as a pelvic floor muscle exercise. They're both literally the exact same thing and you might have heard them being used interchangeably. Now a Kegels exercise, the only goal is to strengthen up your pelvic floor muscles. Now, for those of you that don't know, your pelvic floor muscles, they sit deep within your pelvis. Your pelvis is the bony structure that makes up your hip uh, your hip region. Now, the goal of these muscles and their use is to act as a hammock. So they literally attach from your pubic bone up front all the way to the tailbone around back. And they act as a hammock that supports all of your internal organs. Now, on top of supporting your internal organs, these muscles, your pelvic floor muscles, they play a pivotal role in helping you to achieve and maintain a firm erection and to also help you control your bladder so that you don't leak urine. Now, if you're watching this video, you are probably having issues with either erectile dysfunction or urine leakage. Now, if you're just learning about these muscles, that's okay, cut yourself some slack, because for most of us guys, we never even knew that we've had them. Sure, we know that women need to strengthen up their pelvic floor after giving birth, but for most of us men, unless we're going through erectile dysfunction or urine leakage, yeah, we just go throughout our lives not knowing that we have a pelvic floor. That makes trying to strengthen them up even more difficult because you've gone your whole life without knowing they've even existed. And think of it this way, if you and I were in the gym and I was helping you get, let's say, uh, bigger bicep muscles, I would prescribe you, you know, barbell bicep curls, I might prescribe you chin-ups, and you would be able to see and feel exactly that muscle. You'd be able to see it, you'd be able to feel it, and that would help you get it stronger a heck of a lot faster. And this, herein lies the problem, because with your pelvic floor, you can't actually see these muscles. They lie so deep within the pelvis that you can't see them, making them a little bit more difficult to strengthen up. Now, I can't tell you how many people I have met, probably on a weekly basis, that say, Eric, I have been taught how to perform a Kegel's contraction. I know I'm doing it properly, but I'm still not getting anywhere. And actually, I think my urine leakage is worse. And these people, for the most part, are just so frustrated. And I'm gonna clear everything up and I'm gonna teach you exactly what you need to know and probably where you were going wrong. So now that you know what these muscles are, what their use is in the body, we need to learn how to feel a contraction. Like the analogy I was saying in the gym uh, where we're trying to get your biceps stronger, if, I had your, if you have your hand over your biceps and you were doing a bicep curl, you could physically feel that muscle contracting. Well, the good news with your pelvic floor is you can do the same thing. What you need to do is you need to take your uh, index finger and middle finger on your dominant hand. And what I want you to do right now while watching this video, Place it on your neck as if you're trying to take your pulse. So you take your finger beds here and you place it right on the side of your neck looking for that pulse. Now you don't have to find it, I just wanted you to get those finger placement uh, down pat. That same touch, that same finger placement is what you're going to use to palpate over your perineum. Your perineum is the space of skin in between your anus and your scrotum. 
Now remember, we're on YouTube here and I am not allowed to show you a photo of this, unfortunately, even though it would make our lives so much easier. But what I want you to do right now, I'm gonna do it with you, is I want you to slip your two fingers and I want you to put them down your pants. So you're gonna lift up your scrotum and then you are gonna find the halfway point between your scrotum and your anus. You literally can't miss it because on either side is your legs. There's nowhere else to feel. So find about that midway point. And again, that same pressure, like you're pressing up, taking your pulse, you are not poking into the skin, you're pressing up. Now, you want to press up with enough pressure so that you can actually feel something going on. You don't want to just have your, your two fingers lying there. You want to indent the skin a little bit. So if zero is no intensity, 10 is you trying to poke a hole through your perineum, go for a three. Three out of 10 intensity, pushing up into that skin. Once you find that, you are going to hold this position. So for me, my scrotum is actually in the cup of my hands and then my two fingers are reaching down and pressing up into the skin. So now that I've got this area locked and loaded, that is the position you need to adopt every single time you are doing a Kegels contraction. You need to put your fingers down there because if you don't, you don't actually know if you're doing it properly. And because you can't see these muscles, it leaves a lot of confusion. And we wanna make sure that you are getting quality repetitions in every single time you contract your pelvic floor and do a Kegels exercise. So that is a non-negotiable. If you're gonna to listen to what I say, you need to follow that rule. Two fingers always down your pants, feeling every contraction. And that's how you can be certain you are doing it properly. Next, we need to go over the Kegels positions. Do you do them in standing? Do you do them sitting down? Do you do them lying down? How, how do you do them? There are so many videos on the internet right now and on YouTube explaining this. Let me make it really easy for you. I want you to start in the lying down position. It's just the easiest position to feel a Kegel's contraction in properly. Why? Well, when I'm sitting like I am right now, I have the force of gravity pressing down through my head all the way through my pelvis. And remember how I said the, the pelvic floor muscles, they act as that hammock? Well, guess what? When you're sitting upright, that gravity is pressing and it's stretching that hammock, which means it's gonna be a little bit harder for you to feel that contraction. So when you're first learning out how to do a Kegel's contraction, I always recommend lying down because you are horizontally lying across the plane of gravity, making it a whole lot easier to feel. So now that we got the position taken care of, we're gonna start in line. The last thing that we need to do before we actually get into doing a contraction is we need to learn a cue. A cue is a saying that you would say out loud to yourself or in your own mind that would trigger that automatic response for that pelvic floor to contract. Now there's a few of them. So I want you sitting here watching the video, watching me right now, I want you to try a few of these and I want you to make a mental note of what one works best for you. And when I say works best for you, I want you to uh, one, put your fingers down there. So let's do that right now. So get your fingers in place, so I'll do it with you. Remember, lift up the scrotum, put the two fingers in between, in between the anus and your scrotum, find that middle spot, you do a three out of 10 intensity, pressing up into the skin, hold this position. Okay, now what I want you to do, close your eyes while you're watching this and listen to these three cues and decide what one most resonates with you and the one where you can feel a contraction the best. All right, eyes closed. Start off by taking a really big deep breath. So big breath in, breathe all the way out, Okay, making sure those fingers are pressed up into the skin, three out of 10 intensity. I want you to imagine you are standing in front of a urinal and I want you to stop the flow of urine. Clamp that flow shut, stop the flow, open it up again. So you're gonna stop the flow of urine, open it back up. You should feel just a tiny flicker underneath those two fingers. Okay, cue number two. Again, close your eyes, try this one out. I want you to imagine that you are walking in to a freezing cold ocean. The further you walk in, the higher that water starts to rise 
until that water reaches your scrotum. I want you to imagine like you are pulling that scrotum into your stomach, lift it up out of the water so it doesn't touch, and then let it go back down into the water. So again, you're walking out into a lake, you don't want the scrotum, your scrotum to touch the freezing cold water, lift it up, and then let it drop back down. The third and final cue I want you to imagine, it's Thanksgiving Day, which is actually appropriate because that's coming up. Um, I want you to imagine a turkey baster. So a turkey baster is one of those, you know, squeezy handles with a tube uh, to either baste the turkey in the juice or the, or yeah, the juice is not the gravy, juice. Anyway, if you're a vegetarian, sorry, you're just gonna have to imagine some type of baster. Again, have your fingers down there. I want you to close your eyes and I want you to imagine that you are basting the turkey. So squeeze the baster and draw up that fluid. Draw up the juice and then squeeze it back out. So draw it up, lift the pelvic floor up as you draw up that baster and then squeeze it out. Okay, you can take your hand out of your pants. Good work. So the key with these cues is one of those three, you should have felt a flicker underneath your fingertips. You're probably asking yourself, oh Eric, how do I know if I felt a flicker? If you could feel any bulge out into those fingertips, a small bulge, a big bulge, I don't care. Any movement at all underneath those fingertips, that is your pelvic floor contracting. You've done it. Literally any movement at all, that's your pelvic floor. How do we know it's your pelvic floor? That is literally the only muscle where you're putting your fingers that could have been doing that movement and that is exactly what we want to replicate. Now don't worry, if this flicker was only really small and it dissipated really quickly, that's okay. That's why you're watching this video. Your pelvic floor is very weak and it needs to be strengthened up. Now, what we've gone through so far is number one, I taught you what a Kegel exercise is and what the role of the pelvic floor muscles are in your body. Number two, we went over position, so we are gonna start in the lying down position. And then number three, we went over a cue. That cue is going to be that saying that you say out loud every time. Oh, also, we went over palpation, how to feel it. We are now gonna combine everything together uh, to do your very first Kegel's contraction. So I am now lying flat. I've got my physio table set up here. And notice, I have my knees bent up. You don't want your knees flat. Bend them up because it makes reaching for that perineum so much easier. So let me just make sure I'm in camera frame here. All right, so what you're gonna do, you're gonna take your two fingers on your dominant hand. Again, the same placement as placing on the pulse. I'm gonna put my fingers, gonna lift up the scrotum, and I'm gonna place them on the skin directly in between my anus and my scrotum, and I'm gonna press up. So I'm pressing up in towards my head at a three out of 10 intensity. I am trying to feel everything going on underneath the skin. Next, with my feet touching the floor, I'm gonna place my, my free hand over top of the belly. This is to make sure that you do not clench your stomach muscles when doing a Kegel's contraction. So you're just gonna place the hand right on top of the stomach like this and just rest it here, okay? So now what you're going to do before you do your first Kegel's contraction is you're gonna take a big deep breath in and out. You wanna release any stiffness, any body tension. <sighs> okay. Now, the secret to doing a good Kegel's contraction, doing it properly, is you need to close your eyes. I want you to imagine what you are about to feel underneath your fingertips directly between the scrotum and the anus, so over top your perineum. All right, my eyes are closed, my fingers are in place, my free hand is over my stomach, and my knees are bent up lying on my back. I'm gonna choose the cue that worked the best for me. So for me personally, the cue that works is stopping the flow of urine. So imagining I'm in front of a urinal. All right, so fingers are in place, here we go, eyes are closed, I'm gonna take a big breath in through my nose, Expand the lungs all the way. And next, I'm going to breathe out through my mouth. Let all the air out nice and slow. At the very end of that breath, I'm going to stop the flow of urine, stop it, and then I'm gonna let it go again. 
and then finish the breath. Breathe in again. Suck as much air as you can in. Breathe all the way out. Feel all the air release at the end of the breath. I'm going to stop that flow of urine and then I'm going to start it again. Half a second. Squeeze and then let go. Just like that. And then I'm going to finish the breath. Now, that is how you do a Kegels contraction properly. I want you to try this out for yourself. The simple act of feeling that tiny bulge out into your fingertips, that is your pelvic floor contracting, and that is literally as simple as it gets. And again, while you're watching this video, it's probably gonna feel like a very faint flicker. That's okay. That's just gonna get stronger and stronger and stronger the more you practice. Now, we need to bust some myths here because I've had it up to here with seeing other videos just spewing nonsense on your pelvic floor. You've heard it here first. This is my opinion. I am so tired of guys and even women coming to me telling me that they have seen another professional that have told them they need to be able to hold their pelvic floor contraction for 15 to 20 seconds and you need to do 50 a day. I don't care who tells you this, they are wrong. That is not how your pelvic floor works and trying to hold it for 15, let alone 20 seconds is just not realistic and you're not gonna be able to do it. I can't even do it. And my pelvic floor is perfectly healthy and I teach guys how to do this every single day. It's just not realistic and I don't want you following that advice. When you're starting out, even if you're an intermediate to an advanced, I stop at a six second hold. The most I get my clients to do is hold for six seconds maybe 10 seconds if they're really good. Because here's the thing, it doesn't matter how long you hold for, you need to make sure you have a quality contraction. If you squeeze, but you don't know if that pelvic floor has let go, you don't know how long you're holding it for, so it really doesn't matter. What matters the most is when you clench that pelvic floor, you stop that flow of urine, you can feel it release as well. If you can feel it clench and you can feel it release, that is a good quality contraction. Now when starting out, you are only holding this for about a half a second. Stop the flow of urine, turn it back on. Maybe a second at the most. You need to practice this and master this before you even think about going on to doing a Kegels endurance hold. Now, how do you know you're ready to progress to an endurance hold? You should be able to do the contraction where you snap it on and then release it and you should be able to clearly feel it between your fingertips, or sorry, under your fingertips, which is again, underneath your perineum. If you can do that and you can do 10 repetitions in a row, where you can clearly feel the contraction snap on and then release, you are ready to go to an endurance hold. So you've got lots to practice. I want you dropping any comments you have underneath this video so I can answer any questions. Again, this is a very generic video because everyone's situation is unique, but I wanted to make a video that covers the nuts and bolts on how to do a Kegels contraction properly because it's literally the most common question I get. Now, if you haven't already, please make sure you click that subscribe button. If you like today's video, I post two of these literally every week and I go over every issue that us men experience in life, including all the embarrassing ones, so that you do not have to go through this journey alone. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. I hope you took something away from today's video. And remember, regardless of your situation, keep going and I'll see you in the next video.